Hello there everybody and welcome back to Movie Squirm. Today I'm going to be ranking all four Pet Cemetery movies. So we just did have the new Pet Cemetery Bloodlines released a couple of weeks ago. So I thought this would be a good time to revisit the entire franchise and give you my full thoughts on them. Now I have reviewed the first Pet Cemetery from 1989 and Pet Cemetery Bloodlines, which I'll leave in a link down below along with all my other rankings. And just a heads up, there are going to be maybe one or two spoilers in this video. So if you haven't seen any of these movies, it might be best to go and watch them. But if you're fans of the series, you already know where this goes. I'll try and refrain from too many spoilers if I can, but there are going to be one or two in here, I do imagine. Also, this franchise for me, I wouldn't say there's a terrible movie in here. Even in fourth place, it's a watchable movie. But I had quite a fun time revisiting these films. So let's just get into it now. In fourth place. Sometimes that is better. In fourth place is gonna be the new kid on the block, Pet Cemetery Bloodlines. Now unfortunately for me, this film was just a little bit too vanilla. It takes a story that was already told to us about Timmy Bateman, the guy who comes back from the dead and wreaks havoc on his father's home, and the townsfolk don't take too kindly to that. And that is a five-minute story that Jug Crandall tells in the original Pet Cemetery. Now, this is linked to the remake, so it's a little bit different, but it's basically the same story. And that five-minute story from Jug Crandall is elongated to a 90-minute runtime here. And my main problem with this is it's basically just that. There's nothing really coming from left field or anything else thrown in there to mix it up a little bit. And we've got Jackson White playing uh, Jug Crandall here, a young Jug Crandall who basically wants to get out the town, and this issue with Timmy Bateman is sort of keeping him there. And that is a story arc that is just thrown through so many movies, and that's another problem with this film. You can't really get behind some of the characters, there's nothing really to get invested in because we already know the outcome of this film, we already know where it's gonna go, especially if you watch the remake, Jug Crandall hints at it here and there. So it's not really something that is gonna blow you away. It's just a very linear, narrow path movie. Now, Lindsay Beer is a first time director and I thought she shot the movie quite well, actually. You can tell she's got talent behind the camera. It's a nice visual film to look at and I'm excited to see what she can do in future. Jack Mulhern, who plays Timmy Bateman, was definitely the standout of this movie. I think it was the biggest positive I can give this film because he is a very sinister character. He makes you feel uneasy, he provokes other characters in the movie, and he kind of just wants to wreak havoc, really, because he's already been buried at the cemetery, and we know what that means for characters who are buried there. And he definitely demanded your attention. You couldn't take your eyes off him. And as the movie goes on, he's like a... Coiled spring, really. He's he's getting worse and worse. So I do think that there are positives with this film. It's a watchable movie, but it just doesn't bring anything to this franchise. It's just, like I said, a very vanilla movie that I kind of watched it and kind of forgot about. Even though I had an okay time in it, I would rewatch this film in future, especially if we get a new one coming out or. I go and revisit the franchise. I will definitely include this, but it's definitely the weakest one out of these four films, I feel, which is kind of sucks because I was quite looking forward to this one, especially with Pet Cemetery, you know, being a bit of a favorite of one of the Stephen King movies I like, the original Pet Cemetery. And I was just excited to see what they could do with this, but unfortunately, kind of fell flat on its face. So that is Pet Cemetery Bloodlines in fourth place. Sometimes that is. Coming in third place, we are going to have Pet Cemetery 2. Now, I went into this film thinking it was going to be absolutely disastrous. It felt like it was just going to be a cash-in from the 1989 movie that we got. And Edward Furlong starring in this is a kind of an actor who didn't really appear in too much as we, he got older, did he? And I just thought, oh, is this one of them movies that's just forgotten in time? And I was quite pleasantly surprised by how much I enjoyed this one. So basically, we see Edward Furlong's character move to this town where, you know, Lewis Creed and his family lived. And the cemetery is obviously around there, isn't it? And he soon finds this cemetery with his new friend. 
and all hell starts to break loose. Now we've got Clancy Brown in here, who is definitely the biggest positive of this movie, and he's this total arsehole who is the stepfather to Edward Furlong's friend. And something happens in the middle of the movie, like I said, there might be a few spoilers in here, where Clancy Brown is killed, and they feel like they've got to bring him back because they're kind of responsible for that. And you know they don't want anything to happen. His mother seems very happy with this guy, so they decide to bring him up, bring him back through the pet cemetery because they've heard rumblings that this cemetery can bring people back and stuff. And he <laughs> goes from one asshole to an even bigger asshole. You're already getting an asshole coming back if you're a fairly nice person, but when you bury a bigger an asshole there, you're gonna get an even bigger asshole. And he's coming back, and he's just. Being this such an irritating character, the mother of the family who was clearly in love with him, despite his flaws, can't stand him anymore. He's throwing food about, he's got these rabbits that he skins, and I think he's eating them and stuff in the garden. He's just so weird. It's just a really fun performance to watch Clancy Brown have a lot of fun here. Now the original movie is a very dark creepy tale and it does carry some of that into this movie but I do think there's more of an entertaining vibe here or should I say a more of a fun vibe here. It's a little bit more light-hearted than the original even though there are some moments later on which I didn't quite see coming and I was thinking oh shit <laughs> you know <laughs> I can see what they've done there. They've took something from the original Pet Cemetery, and it kind of throws you off even a little bit more there because you're having more of a fun time with this one because of the entertainment factor that it goes for. I liked how they linked it to the original with all the ghost stories of Lois Creek. Kids tell it by the campfire that this family just went, you know, that the father went insane and his kids died and stuff. I liked all of that, the way it links to the original movie. It doesn't just kind of forget it, you know, it carries it in there. And this all takes place around Halloween. A lot of the movie does anyway, which is, you know, that was kind of fun. And there's some cool death scenes in here as well, one especially involving a motorbike. But it does feel like it's kind of thrown out there. Like I said, I thought it was going to be a bit of a cash grab. And I wouldn't say it's exactly that, but it just doesn't feel like it does anything too new. It kind of just feels like, okay, that was a popular movie. we got to make a sequel. Yeah, it was fine. I had a good time with it, and it was way better than I expected. So that is Pet Cemetery 2 in third place. Sometimes that is better. Coming in the second place is going to be the Pet Cemetery remake. Now, if I did not rewatch this one just recently, I probably would have put Pet Cemetery 2 above this, but this one just slightly edges it because this is a movie that has vastly improved for me upon rewatch. I was quite disappointed with this one at the cinema, but going into it a second time, I quite enjoyed this movie. Now, I think I went in with certain expectations. I wanted Jug Crandall to have the voice and say, oh, you got to stay away from that road. I was so excited to see all of that. And we didn't quite get that at all, really. It's a totally different take on Jug Crandall from John Lithgow. And I wanted all the Zelda scenes to be terrifying again. And they're not quite that in this movie either. But there's still a lot to like here. A visually stunning movie, I think. I don't know if it's because I watched this on 4K that it just looked a lot better to me, but I think this is really nicely shot. I love the colour palette we go for here. It just feels like a very dark and sinister film, a very dark setting, and you know, it just feels like more of a horror movie compared to all of the other ones in this movie, I'd feel. I'll speak about the visuals on the first one in just a minute, but I just think that, you know, it, it, this is a decent remake. Jason Clark for me is a better. Lois Creed, I just think he's an overall better actor than Dale Midkiff. I'm not taking anything away from him because he does put a good performance in that original, but that was definitely a better thing that this remake had going for it. I've got to apologise to my friend Tom180 here as well because I've done a horror hot takes video and he said the Pet Cemetery remake is better than the original in every single way and I kind of shot him down there. Not shot him down, but I, I totally disagree with him and I just thought this was better. The original was better in every single way, but I can see where he's coming from now. So Tom, I do apologise for that if I was a little bit hard on that reaction if you like. 
But we also have, you know, John Lithgow, who I said I was disappointed in in the first time. I think he brings something different to Jug Crandall, and it's a little bit more of a, um, a you know, one of them characters who's gone through a lot. You can sort of see it in his emotions and stuff. He's less of a fun character in this one, but someone who, you know, has led a hard life, and you can tell, and he sees something new in Ellie and he you know he sees someone who looks up to him and stuff you can see the delight on his face there and stuff like that in this one and I think the whole difference with this one is that we don't have Gage being killed in this we do have Ellie and that was the big turning point if they only hadn't showed that in the damn trailers that would have been a big plus but they kind of ruined it for everyone. I was one of them lucky ones who didn't see the trailer going into this one but I remember everyone complaining about it and when Ellie comes back, I do think she's a very sinister character. And I thought the young girl who put a great performance in here as her. And she was just one of them. You couldn't quite take your eyes off. You didn't know what she was kind of going to do next. And I do think it has some hard-hitting scenes like the original. Like, Gage being killed in the original is horrifying. But here, we see Ellie get killed at her own birthday party with more family members around and everything. And that scene was quite disturbing to watch, I thought. But I've got to say, the climax of this film is one of the creepiest things in this entire franchise, if not the creepiest, where Gage is the only survivor of this family and he's locked in the car. And Lewis Creed and you know his family have all been buried at the cemetery and they all come back and sort of surround the car and they're gonna kill this two-year-old gage and the movie just finishes i think that's a great ending but overall i really enjoyed this one a second time around so in second place i've got to put the pet cemetery remake sometimes that is better coming in first place though is the og the 1989 movie pet cemetery now, this is a movie I've watched about three times now. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's an elite horror movie or anything, but it's a very, very good Stephen King adaptation. We see you know, Dale Midkiff, who plays Lois Creed, and his family move to this house. And basically, there's a cemetery by where he is told that if you bury your pets there, they will come back. And he lives on this road where... All these wagons are just shooting down all the time. And lo and behold, his cat is killed. And he puts the cat in the cemetery and it comes back. But it's scratching his face and everything, just being this little arsehole. And that eventually leads to family members being buried there. And I just think this is a very interesting concept from Stephen King. The guy is an absolute genius. And this is one of his stories that feels very simple, but it's not. It just adds a lot more to the simple concept we have here because we've got stuff like Zelda who is Rachel Creed's sister and that's a whole little backstory there where she was left alone with this this sister who had a twisted spine and stuff and some of them scenes are the most horrifying scenes you will ever see in a movie Zelda is absolutely terrifying in this film <laughs> and we've got the subplot with Timmy Bateman as well which really freaked me out a lot more this time you know I, that didn't quite sit right with me that this movie has got some generally creepy moments. I'm not really scared by films, but my spine was tingling just a little bit there watching this one because my memories of it were faded and I'm glad I rewatched it a little bit there. Some things I just totally forgot about. And the movie just goes like a full damn slasher movie in the third act with Gage just taking people out left, right and centre. He hangs his own mother at one point, for God's sake. And it's interesting to see Dale Midkiff kind of, you know, sorry, Lewis Creed, who played by Dale McKiff, kind of just lose his mind. He's just gone batshit insane by the third act. He's losing everything around him. And what I noticed this time more is that the death just surrounds this family. I never quite got the story with Zelda and stuff, but that is something to do with the family who are there, I think. I think death just surrounds them, which is an interesting take. I do have a couple of problems with it. Visually, it looks like a TV movie. Like I said, the remake is way better shot, visually better looking, and that is probably something to do with just time and the year we've set it in. Also, the the Victor character, I never quite get that. I mean, I've watched it three times now and thought, what the hell is the point in this character? People have told me in the comments their take, and yeah, that is fine. But it's mostly coming from the novel and stuff, and this is the, the movie. I wish, you know, the director would have kind of just 
need that more clear on the movie. But overall, this is a really fun horror movie. And I can't end this segment without talking about Fred Gwynn's character, Jug Crandall. I mean, he, the guy is just the best part of this movie. He is such a fun character to be around. Every time he says the word road, I am just filled with delight. You stay away from that road. That's a very dangerous road, Lewis. <laughs> I just love how he says this word, but I just love his accent throughout it. Judd Crandall. I live just across the road. You want to watch out that road. And he's just such a good side character to have in this movie who befriends Lewis Creed and his family, but he's got some little demons there where he is questionable. Is he really this nice guy or... It's just something sinister about him, even though he may not mean it. So I just think this is a really fun movie, a really solid Stephen King adaptation, and definitely the creepiest movie in this franchise, the one that goes for it the most, with some moments that borderline cross the line there because we've got kids being killed here and everything. So I've got to put this in at number one, Pet Cemetery, 1989. Sometimes that is better. Okay, guys, hope you all enjoyed this Pet Cemetery ranking. What is your ranking of the Pet Cemetery movies? Are you a fan of these films? Are you not? Let me know down below. I'm going to get a bit of a discussion going. Thanks so much, guys. You all take care, and I'll see you all in the next video.